2017 meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. When did I lose my committee here? We got three, four. Yeah. I lost, I lost half my committee. Yeah, thank you. What, Joe? You hear me now? Better? Okay. Um, adequate notice of the June 8th, 2017 meeting. Dennis, get out of here. All right. Uh, has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act by posting written notice on the agenda on the, bill, uh, the meeting on a bulletin board in the Municipal Building 1000 Route 10, Township Hanover, by hand delivering, faxing, or or uh, faxing such a notice and just the following newspapers. Uh, Morris County's uh, Daily Record, the Star Ledger, Hanover Eagle, by filing same with the Township Clerk. And uh, once, okay, you got that. Once again, you know the roll call? Yes, on roll call, Committee Man Gallagher. Here. Committee Man Ferramos. Here. Committee Man Bruno. Here. Committee Man Capola. Here. Committee Man Francie Owen. Here. Five members in attendance, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, or gentlemen, at this point, I'd like to open the meeting to the public for any items that appear on the agenda. Move and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open. Anyone who would like to address the Township Committee at this time can do so from the podium, giving us your name and address for the record. Joe, what's that? Motion to close. Oh, we, 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 we did earlier. Do we, should we? Should, uh, 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 we have a request of the public to do another Pledge of Allegiance. Gen ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise and join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. And loudly, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We just know for the record we did do it in 75. Yeah, well, we did it again. So it's affirmative. It's affirmative. Uh, okay, once again, I have a motion to open. All in favor? Okay, the floor is open. Anyone who would like to address the Township Committee at this time may do so from the podium, giving us your name, address, Social Security number, and any other pertinent information. Hearing none, seeing none. Motion to close. Motion to close. We, we will reopen the meeting shortly again. Uh, motion to close is for our Mr. Administrator. Okay, we have the approval of the Township Committee minutes, regular minutes of May 25th, 2017. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Motion, second. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Paul Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Uh, we'll note one item of communication. We have the submission from the Southeast Morris County Municipal Utilities Authority of the Authority's Independent Auditor Report for the year ending December 31st, 2016. Uh, on departmental reports, we have the following reports that have been filed in my office. They include the report of the Chief of Police for all activities conducted by the Police Department during the month of May. The construction official has submitted his report on the issuance of all construction permits and uh, certificates of occupancy through May 16th. We have two reports from the um, township's property maintenance officer, uh, reports dated May 24th and June the 8th. The township engineer also has submitted two reports, one dated May 11th and the second dated June the 8th. A report on all activities uh, by the uh, engineering department. And finally, the superintendent of public works has submitted his reports for all activities and projects conducted by, by the public works department during May 2017. And as we continue, ladies and gentlemen, we have two ordinances for public hearing and adoption. The first is docketed as ordinance number 15-2017. It's an ordinance of the Township Committee of the Township of Hanover, amending and supplementing chapter 166 of the Code of the Township, entitled Land Use and Development Legislation, by amending the permitted uses in the Whippany Center WC Zone District in order to allow certain small-scale industrial uses having an accessory retail component. Uh, we have the proof of publication that the ordinance and the notice of introduction appeared in full in the May 3rd issue of the Daily Record. We also have notification from the planning board that the, uh, from the county planning <coughs> board, 
that the ordinance has been filed with the Morris County Planning Board. And finally, we have a letter of recommendation from the Township's uh, Planning Board. Uh, it's a letter dated May 23rd, 2017. And in the interest of time, I'll read the last paragraph into the record. It's signed by Gene Pinadella, the Chairman of the Planning Board. <laughs> Although the industrial uses are not one of the recommended uses in the zone, the board does not consider the limited industrial uses of the type and scale that would be permitted by Ordinance 15-2017 and which would be required to contain an accessory retail component to be substantially inconsistent with the intent of the WC Zone District or with the permitted uses in the zone. For this reason, the Planning Board has determined that Ordinance 15-2017 is substantially consistent with the Master Plan. So at this time, may we have a motion to convene the public hearing on Ordinance 15-2017. I have a motion by Mr. Coppola, seconded by Mr. Uh, Gallagher. Gallagher. A roll call for public hearing. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Mosca. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Hola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Is there anyone in chambers wishing to be heard concerning Ordinance 15 2017? Move motion to close. We have a motion Second. to close. Uh, seconded. Motion by Mr. Bruno, Mr. Pola, and Mr. Gallagher on roll call to close the public hearing. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermas. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Pola. Yes. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Now, a vote on adoption, be it resolved that an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the Township Committee of the Township of Hanover, amending and supplementing Chapter 166 of the Code of the Township, entitled Land Use and Development Legislation, by amending the permitted uses in the Whippany Center WC Zone District, in order to allow certain small-scale industrial uses having an accessory retail component, be passed on final reading, and that a notice of the final passage of the ordinance be published in the June 14th issue of the Daily Record. So moved. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Fermasca, seconded by Mr. Coppola on adoption. This is a roll call on adoption. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermasca. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Coppola. Aye. And Mr. Francio. Aye. So adopted. <clears throat> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we continue with ordinance number 17-2017. This is an ordinance of the Township Committee <coughs> authorizing the purchase of one new diesel-powered 7.3 cubic yard volumetric capacity of the municipal street sweeper, Timco Model 600 regenerative air sweeper or approved equal, and further authorizing the appropriation of $273,000 from the 2017 capital improvement fund and all prior years for the financing of the street sweeper purchase. We have the proof of publication that the ordinance and the notice of introduction appeared in full in the May 29th issue of the Daily Record in accordance with the law. So at this time, may we have a motion on uh, so adoption. Moved. Second. Of public hearing, rather. We have a motion by Mr. Bruno, seconded by Mr. Gallagher. This is a roll call on to open the public hearing. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermas. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Pola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Is there anyone in chambers wishing to be heard concerning ordinance number 17-2017? Hearing none, seeing none, may we have a motion to close the public Moved. hearing. We have a motion by Mr. Bruno, seconded by Mr. Coppola. On roll call to close the public hearing. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermas. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Paula Aye. and Mr. Francioli. Aye. Now on adoption, be it resolved that an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the Township Committee authorizing the purchase of <coughs> one new diesel-powered 7.3 cubic yard volumetric capacity municipal street sweeper, Timco Model 600 regenerative air sweeper or approved equal, and further authorizing the appropriation of $273,000 
from the 2017 Capital Improvement Fund in all prior years for the financing of the street sweeper purchase be passed on final reading and that a notice of the final passage of the ordinance be published in the June 14th issue of the Daily Record. Now we have a motion on adoption. So moved. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. On uh, Mr. Bruno and Mr. Gallagher Number on adoption. Nine. This is the roll call. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Karamaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francisco. Aye. 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 <laughs> Aye. 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 Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue with the agenda, we have resolutions as consent agenda on the bottom of page one to page three. Are there any comments or questions from members of the governing body concerning any of the resolutions? Move they be approved. Second. There's a motion by Mr. Capola, seconded by Mr. Faramaska. On the consent agenda, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Franciola. Aye. So approved. We now move to the uh, payment of bills, four million nine hundred thousand four hundred seventy-one dollars and twenty-three cents. We have a motion on approval so of the bills. Motion second by Mr. Francioli, seconded by Mr. Capola. A roll call, mm -hmm. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Farinowski. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. We have two raffle applications as a consent agenda. Raffle application 3030, Hilldale Park Presbyterian Church, an on-premise 50-50. And raffle application 3031, Walto Hilldale Park Presbyterian Church on an off-premise raffle. <coughs> and we have a motion for Motion approval. to approve. We have a motion by Mr. Bruno. Second. Second by Mr. Gallagher. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Bruno. Aye. Paula. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So approved, Mr. Chairman, the members of the Township Committee. That clears the agenda of the Business Administrator Township thank Clerk, you. and I thank you. Thank you, Joe. Okay, very good. All right, gentlemen, once again, I'd like to open the floor. Motion to open. So moved. Moved and seconded. All Second. in favor? Aye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, once again, the floor is open. Anyone who would like to address the Township Committee at this time can do so from the podium, giving us your name and address for the record. Seeing none. Motion to close. Okay, motion to close. Second. I see some discussion going on. Floor remains open, right? Yeah. <laughs> Reopen. Oh. Name and address. Hi, my name is Lucy Canizzo, and I live at 124 Griffith Drive. The reason why I'm here is because we are looking to have a curb and a sidewalk constructed on Troy Road, if that's possible. Um, it's very dangerous for people who are walking in that area. There's no sidewalk. Uh, it's dangerous. And we're waiting for something to happen. And God forbid, we don't want anything to happen to anybody. Um, we feel that it is very necessary to have a curb and a sidewalk constructed on Troy Road. Also, um, on Troy Road, when the snow is removed, it seems like the snow is being piled all at the corner. Of, of Griffith and Troy Road. And it's very hard for us as a landlord to remove that snow. And it looks like on Troy Road, they are moving, the snow is getting plowed into the grass area and it keeps coming and it's coming and it's all building up and there's dirt and there's rocks and there's, the grass is really getting messy. And at this point now, it's all mud. When it rains, it gets to be all mud and it, we can't keep it clean. So I think that if there's a curb or a sidewalk, it's better for the people and also for us to keep it neat and clean. And I also have another issue that I like to discuss. On uh, my property, on Troy Road, we have two gas meters. Um, there's six manholes, we have gas meters. Every so often we can smell the gas. I call public service, they come, they check it, and that's it. They're gone. The soil has become very um, vegetated. There is no grass growing, um, and it looks like it's contaminated. To me, it looks like the soil is contaminated. I have pictures here to show you exactly what it looks like at this point. I contacted the township engineer to find out who's responsible for the cleanup. Is it the township or is it the, the uh, gas company? I did not get an answer. 
I contacted public service. They came out. They know there's some kind of a problem. There's like a gas leak or something. And that was it. I haven't seen them. I finally got to them again. They said that they're going to send somebody out, hopefully next week, to take a look at it to see exactly what the problem is. If there's a gas leak, that soil needs to be taken care of. It needs to be removed, and it needs to be filled with new soil. It's dangerous. It's unhealthy. We are walking in that area. Uh, we cut the grass in that area. I have grandchildren in that area, and it's unhealthy, and it's unsafe. And I want something to be done about that. If I do not get a call from, pu from public service, that they're going to clean that soil, I'm going to DEP. After DEP, if that doesn't work, I have to get an attorney. If I become ill, my grandchildren become ill, there's going to be a major lawsuit. And I do not want to see that happen. So I would like to have that taken care of. So whose responsibility is that to take care of that soil? Is it public service or is it the town? Can I get an answer? Well, gas leak is the responsibility of PSE and G. They're the ones who own the gas line. And if you can smell gas, I mean, any time I've smelled gas and called, they're, they're at my house in like five minutes. Well, so I can't imagine that they haven't responded. That just doesn't make sense. Well, they'll come out, they'll look at it, Proceeds. and that's it. They don't Nothing smell gas? They're saying there is no gas leak? Is we that what they're saying? We smelled gas uh, previously. Now we don't smell it. Maybe it's gone into the soil. Maybe that's what's happening. I would think they would have to test the line, right? If it's a gas main, they've got to determine if there's a that's leak or I there think. isn't a leak. I was told by the public service also that they pay rent on that property. I don't know if that's true or not. Well, that doesn't give them right to a gas leak. You can't have a gas leak um, regardless of... So is no, it their responsibility to clean it? Absolutely, it's their responsibility. That, that, Does the town have anything to do with Jerry, that property? No, no, let's, let's ask our I, engineer I, where I, we I are. Sent, Jerry, what's I it? have sent uh, an email to Everton Scott, who's our PSE&G uh, liaison. Uh, for an explanation and uh, just an understanding of what of what uh, his understanding of this situation is, because apparently there's been contact with the property owner, uh, but Everton has not responded to the email. I did copy Joe on that email also. Who are you talking to? Everton Scott. Everton? Yes. Um, I'm out of the pocket somewhere. You want to? Uh... Why don't we invite Everton in for a meeting? Right. And then we can bring him if necessary for a field Maybe we survey. ask Everton to go out and take a look. Field survey. Right, right. You know, go out. And, but apparently, I guess PSENG has been out there. They've been um, out there, but nothing has been done as but of again, yet. But again, there's been no communication with the township in terms of what they found, in terms of no. the, the extent of contamination. We don't, we don't know. As a township, we don't know yet. All right. Well, I did contact a supervisor last week, and he right. did say that they were going to come out maybe by next week. They have to excavate or they have to see exactly what the problem is. Okay. I want it taken care of because it's getting uh, worse and worse and it's spreading. It's spreading even more, as you can see to the pictures. Uh, Jerry, so, uh, get. Uh, you know, so, as a taxpayer. Oh, really, it's, it's, it's Everton Scott needs uh, He's our community liaison. He's our contact. I can't believe he hasn't gotten right back. Um, it's been, I think, Joe, that email, I think you sent out. I, I think Mr. Yes, Mr. Canizo came to my office uh, earlier the week, and then... Uh, yes, he did twice. Yes, um, and I emailed I immediately right after that. On Wednesday. Yeah, I think it was one, Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes, Wednesday. <laughs> well, I would like some action taken on right. this. If the town, if you have to enforce it on public service, I would appreciate that. I, we are taxpayers, and we do want some respect, and we want services rendered. So please, uh, you, you know, can Jerry, do something. Um, Get a hold of Carlos Perez tomorrow, health department, Board of Health. Okay. Tell him to be out there and tell him to give us. A, is, is it, now they might I have can some, forward him that email. Forward him the information. So tell him we have a critical issue regarding. Have you? Do you have these? Pictures? Yes, I do. And I email those pictures to Everton also. Okay. All we right. also we, had. We will, um, we will have it attended to immediately. I hope so. All right. And I also we also had a row of trees, the shrubs that were but that there. That doesn't mean we're going to do the sidewalk immediately. Pardon? I said, but that doesn't mean we're going to do the sidewalk immediately. Well, I hope something can be done because we do have children. No, we'll, we'll, you know we have what? small. Let's. Uh, regarding. We do have small children that are going to be attending kindergarten. <clears throat> Where's the? Where are they going to meet the bus? How are they going to? The, photo, the, the photos do a, a pretty respectable job of showing us what the curbing looks like, too. So not only okay. did you capture the gas meters, and but the curb also. Uh, we do have an idea. Okay. Um, do we have anything in, in our plans for sidewalks on that side? Um, actually, it's, it's funny because last year, 
uh, we at the engineering part noticed that um, we did want to uh, improve that road, um, but it's going to take modifications to the traffic signal, some survey, some actual DEP permit work because there's some wetlands in the area. Um, so we, we solicited a, um, uh, from an engineering company design services uh, just so we can get a proposal for just the design so you're, you're you're talking about a reconstruct a reconstruct yeah you're talking about a reconstruct of the road and you probably at the time you do a reconstruct they do curbings and sidewalks become part of that plan right. that they're looking at now now uh, your next question is okay uh, when's this going to happen how long is that well that, take? that proposal um quite honestly um seemed exorbitant to us so we're going to reach out to some additional firms to try and see if uh, um it's a we get a better price all right. Are all you right. budgeted I, at all for this in this? No, that's why. No, not not for design. Not not for this year. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, and I also want to mention that I do have a neighbor who's been there, who lived on that street for 35 years, and he was told 35 years ago that a, cur a sidewalk would be constructed. <coughs> okay, just past that 35 years ago. Long time ago. They're asking who pays for the sidewalk. Well, as a, as a matter town? of policy, uh, side, when new curb and new sidewalk is installed, um, the town as a, uh, assesses the property owner 50% of the cost of the curb and sidewalk. What's the length of, uh, that you got to go here? Uh, we would be, it's, it's from Troy Hills so Road to Algonquin Parkway, uh, generally. Um, that, that section of Troy Road is, is unimproved. It has no curb. How many houses are actually on that stretch of uh, Troy probably, Road? Probably, I would say three or three four. Or four yeah. Maybe four homes. Not that many homes. Maybe that's the reason why. That's it's probably the, the reason homes, why. The homes on the opposite side are in Parsippany, yeah. Troy Hills. The, the boundary would be that the edge of the road on the north side. I think you want to if that maybe is a problem, why it's never been constructed. Yeah, I, I think we need to, in order of priority, address... John's our what, director of engineering. What's... Immediate. What's immediate is we need to find out what's going on with the gas issue. Okay. So let's let's do that. Please. Let's continue along this evaluation of the sidewalk issue, but we also need to un be un understanding that if you're advocating this to us, there is a shared responsibility in terms of the cost for that sidewalk. So it's not the policy within the township is such that it's a 50-50 split for the sidewalk. So you don't have the, to pay uh, it. The resident? You don't have to pay. The resident doesn't have to pay it up front, but there's a period of time that they'll explain to you, ten, the finance ten department, 10 years, <laughs> ten years on how that would be paid back. Curbing, also. Mm -hmm. Curbing, yeah, it's the sidewalk and the curbing. So those, those improvements. The road infrastructure, that belongs to the town. But the new sidewalk, the new curbing, that's a split responsibility. So we just want everybody to understand what the facts are. We don't want to have any surprises. <laughs> Okay, but I do appreciate yeah. if you can thank look you. into that and look into the uh, gas sure. problem. we Will do. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. The floor remains open. Does anyone else like to be heard at this time? Same Joe, issue. you're looking at the clock. What? Yeah. This, 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 this might be the same issue again. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mario Barbaciano. I live at 12 Troy Road. Uh, I'm the one that was told 35 years ago when I had to dedicate 10 feet of frontage, both properties, for future road improvement. Now, I realize government works a little slow, but 35 years is ridiculous. They've done Algonquin, or near Algonquin, the paving, and they stopped at Algonquin. They've done other major road repairs, sidewalks. It seems like we're the forgotten area. It, it affects four houses. That's it. <clears throat> Over 35 years after the 10 feet that was given to the town, and still nothing. I'm sure most of you weren't even around in that area 35 years ago. No, most of you. I know some of you were. But why does it take so long? Why did it take people to come here and complain about it? And now we're told we have to pay for it. Well. You know, take, taking it two steps here, yeah. uh, the, the policy regarding uh, the sidewalks and improvements uh, has always been on the books. In other words, that you, you would have learned about that immediately 35 years ago as well as today. So, I mean, that's, that's been on the books. But uh, the Township Committee depends upon the investigations and the reports that we get from the engineering department as to the conditions of roads. 
The way it works is every year at budget time, we put an appropriation of amount of money in a budget for a certain amount of roads. Uh, this year, we're somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 or 16, I think, that, uh, that are being done. Uh, how do we evaluate which ones get done? We depend on the reports that our engineering department gives us, and they'll go out and they physically examine roads. Uh, sometimes they'll take core samples. They'll take other evaluations that, and tell us. He then puts it on a list and just informs the township committee, these are the roads that he wants to do. So uh, again, I have to defer back to the engineering department and say, are, are, is this road, and I guess it is, it is because it is uh, uh, for total reconstruct. Because, now, you know, you know has it been on your list for 35 years? I mean, it, I, no. I'm, I'm not being cute. I'm just saying, how long has it been? Predates you. Uh, probably um, maybe four years ago, we started to identify that this road needed to be improved. And at some point, we were going to, you know, look into can, that. Can this gentleman hear that, that uh, well, it, is, uh, it is on your uh, a list your budget list to be to be done in the uh, well, again, new, new year coming or what? You know, first we have to do design. There might be some additional right water right away. Maybe not from your property, Mr. Barciano, but maybe other property owners uh, need to provide right away. So all that needs to first be uh, looked at and evaluated. So that's part of the design process. And as I said, that um, that first quote that we received was one hundred and eleven thousand dollars just for design. We're not talking about the construction of the road. So again, this proposal seemed to us a little bit exorbitant. So we're going to look into uh, other design firms to see if we can get a more reason what we feel is a more reasonable price. Um, so you know that maybe that's one year of design. Maybe then the following year we go into construction. Again, it it it, it relates to the budget and it relates to the condition of other roads also. Again, it's it's always a balance. Um, and certainly, I think, uh, you know, we, it is on our radar. We do identify it as a road that needs to be improved. It does have a lot of traffic. Not only, I know there's only maybe four residents on it, but uh, in terms of there is a lot of cut through traffic um, from Algonquin and then uh, Troy Hills Road up through Parsippany. So it is a cut through road. We do identify that as, as a road that does see a lot of uh, activity on it. Um, you know, I, again, I can't guarantee that it's going to be done, you know, in, in a year or two. Again, it, there's a lot of evaluation that still needs to take place. Uh, but it is something that I, I think uh, is on a shorter time frame than 35 years. You know, a few years ago, we had a, a traffic light that was installed on Troy Road and Beverwick. Now, it took a few accidents for that to happen. Now... It's not going to take a few accidents for this road to be completed. Is that what we're all waiting for? Is that why it took like 35 years or 30 years for someone to say, maybe we need something on Troy Road? It seems like accidents have to happen before people no, move. I, I don't agree with that. You know, I, don't, I don't think there's a large uh, an accident history on that road. I really don't. I think uh, if there was, then I think the police department and other traffic safety mm -hmm. officers would have brought that to our attention. Uh, so I don't By think accidents, a, I don't, I don't think mean traffic accidents. Issue. I mean walking accidents because there's nowhere to walk. Nowhere to walk. And the cars go by, they're kind of fast, and it's crowded between 4 and 5.30. Where can someone walk from one where, house? Where would they be walking from and to on that part of Troy Road? Oh. I'm just curious. Okay, from, from, where? from the house itself, let's say uh, either my house, next door, to even... Uh, Griffin, where we had to catch the bus for the kids. They had a trespass, basically, through my neighbor's yard and driveway. They couldn't walk in the street to catch the bus. You can't walk on You have school-age children now that are walking to the bus on Griffith? Well, that's where my kids... Now, go. right now, I'm saying, who's, who's walking on Griffith? You have school-age children and they have to walk to a bus stop? Is that... From the house on Troy Road, and the bus won't pick them up in front of the house? I don't know yet, but my kids are through school. Right. I'm saying today, because we're trying to determine. I've been on this committee for six years. I've never heard anyone mention paving that part of Troy Road. So that's why I'm a little surprised yeah. that this has been a, an issue that's been festering for 35 years. I'm trying to understand 
you know, where the disconnect is. If the school bus is not stopping in front of the house and they're making the kids walk on that part of Troy Road, that's dangerous. We should know about that. But you're saying that's not happening anymore. So I'm trying to determine, in putting in a sidewalk, as our engineer mentioned, it's over $100,000 just to do the engineering. That sounds to me like a seven or $800,000 job. Um, for safety, absolutely. But I'm hearing there's no accidents there. If kids have to walk to the school bus, that's, that's obviously very important. But now you're saying there really aren't any kids walking to the school bus. So for four homeowners, um, seven or $800,000 in tax money, plus the homeowner, is going to have to subsidize some of that. It's a lot of money. Um, so we're trying to get to the bottom of what, what problem we're really solving here. Mm -hmm. Is the bus stopping on Troy to pick bus. up the children? No, now, today, we're looking at probably upwards of $700,000. Is that about right, Jerry? Uh, again, uh, because there's traffic signal modifications, uh, DEP permitting issues, there might be some right-of-way that's required. I, it's, hard, it's, it's hard for me at this point well, to put a number on it, but it's not going to be... 100000 in design. 100000 in design. But if there's an imminent safety issue, let's... let's well, that's let's what I'm trying to get that. to. What problem are we solving by putting the sidewalk in? No. For a pedestrian, no, that's not. Something happened to a pedestrian. We could say that about any road in town. Where is the I'm bus? sorry, but Where I'm just trying to bus? determine. You know, we're trying to pave roads that have big potholes, that have major issues going on. You know, it's all taxpayer money. We try to go in a triage order, the ones that are worst, of course, we do. If there's a safety issue with school kids, we want to know about it. But there's also a pedestrian issue. Where, we where are they walk. walking from and to? Like a quick to check was just put in across the street, right? So we have people on Jefferson Road that are screaming bloody murder because their kids want to walk to quick check. So that's an issue. We've got people that are walking up and down Jefferson Road because a quick check was put in. I don't know of any retail over in that part of Troy Road. So that's really what I'm trying to get to. We can't where walk. are people walking to? From our house to Griffith to a, a street that does have sidewalks where someone can just stroll, take a walk, and, and walk their kids. There's, we can't walk them on Troy Road. So th there is an issue. It doesn't have to be a school bus. It's a place to walk. We can't walk from one street to another without But going. that was the case when you bought the house, right? I mean, I don't want to get into a big debate here, but... Well, I understand, but that was the case when they asked for the 10 feet for the improvement, which was 35 years ago. So. 35 years is a long time, so it doesn't matter, well, well, that's the way you bought it, we understand, but the traffic wasn't as severe as it is today. They're coming from Algonquin, well, you, you already said where they go through, through Beverwick and through Precipity. So the traffic increased quite a bit. Okay. Right, the, the, the bottom line here, and, and Bob, the bottom line is here is Jerry's into uh, putting together spec for this right now and uh, trying to get numbers together. That's where That's you right. are? Yep. All right, Excuse you're going to continue on that page. Now, yes. what we'll have to do Mr. is, Mayor, I'm sorry, Gene. Gene, for, for the purpose of recording, you have to go to the mic, please. Thank you, sir. School board. For the record, we need your name and address. Gene Pinadella, 38 Sunset Drive. Thank you. It doesn't stop you. The fact that I wanted to bring up to what Bob was talking about is the fact that there's only one traffic light on Troy Hills Road in that area. And so that's the only safe place to cross for Whippany residents that want to get across and either walk down to, to Griffith Drive and up to Blackbrook Park or to walk past Griffith Drive down to Algonquin and to the cheer places that are there, to the uh, health club that's there, if anybody wanted to walk. But most people won't walk there because there's no street between Troy Hills, no sidewalks between Troy Hills Road and Griffith Drive. All right? So that's been a problem all along. When we did the trails concept, that was a primary area for the trails to cross over Troy Hills Road. Mm -hmm. All right? And be able to go and connect into the East Hanover Patriots Path. Mm -hmm. The problem is there's no sidewalk for it to go on. And if you're looking at safety, you don't want people crossing Troy Hills Road up the street because you're getting heavy traffic and it moves on that road. So I think what they're trying to tell you is that the only way to cross Troy Hills Road, all right, in that area is at that traffic light. And once you cross it, you have to walk up Troy Hills Road and around in order to stay on sidewalks. Rock, 
So I think you ought to consider that as part of the issue, either that or maybe you need to put some other traffic lights in on Troy Hills Road. Hey, I have one question for you, if you don't sure. mind. Go ahead. This, is there, a, there is a sidewalk on Troy Hills Road on the east side, correct? Is there a side? Yes. And then there is a sidewalk on Gri uh, Griffin, right? Yes, there is. So that would, if there's anybody on Troy Hills Road, then they would have safe passage along the sidewalk, make the right on Troy Road, make they a right. They have to go up and there. around. Yes. Okay, so I see what how that satisfies Bob's question because that ties it together in that it's much safer for people on Troy Hills Road to get to Griffin to go to the ball field and to go to the chair. But place. just what I'm trying to tell you is, if there was, a, you've got a public crossing there mm -hmm. because of the traffic light. Right. But once you cross the street, you can't stay on Troy Road. You have to alter your route in order to go up on the east side of, of your right, on Troy Hills Road. Right. And it's kind of out of the way, number one. And you're walking on, on sidewalks all the way around. And you're right, the sidewalks will take you out to Griffith if you want to take all that alternate traffic uh, in your walking mode. The answer is that road needs to get a sidewalk. For years we've been after it to get a sidewalk, and when we did the trail study, we recommended that a sidewalk go in there. Okay. But we we've run into the same problem. Let, let's let's do this. Let's do this. All right. The, uh, the engineer is uh, assuring us in the public on the record here that that he's uh, working on specifications for this. You're going back out to take another. Yeah, look I'm going back out to get more are. proposals. All right. Um, wh what kind of window of time before you begin to get numbers together, etc.? What are you What are you looking uh, at? For proposals to come back, um, probably talking about four weeks. Okay. You, know, you have to give the... All right. The, then in the process, once he gets that proposal back, then he's got to come up with an estimate for uh, what that proposal says this, this reconstruct would cost. Once you've got that number, then we've got to discuss budgeting for that cost. I could tell you folks, and, and we were into June, six months into the new year, six months to the end of the, of the year, that uh, we are not budgeted. Uh, and once we cast our budget at the beginning of the year, we've got to live by that unless there's emergency appropriations. I don't want to get into that. So we're going to have to live with our budget from where we are going forward. At the first of the year, I'm going to assume that somewhere on that list of 15, if this is 16 or 2 or 6 or whatever, we're going to take a look at it. Correct, yes. And then we will take a look at the whole number. Now, it very may well be that this was 800 to a million bucks. I don't know. But from what I'm hearing between your conversation between Bob and you, you're, you're talking, you're playing with some hefty numbers. It, it'll be a big portion of the road. And if I, if I put that into perspective for you folks, last year we appropriated a million and a half to, to all our roads for, for this area. So if we're talking about one, one road with this kind of money, it's a significant investment. Doesn't mean we ignore it. Doesn't mean we're not, not going to look at it. Maybe there are some, uh, when we look at the spec, there are other alternatives and, and I, I, I don't know what they are, but let's let's get it done. Let's get it before the committee in the course of the of this year, and then we can discuss how we want to approach it. While we're evaluating the sidewalk decision, I do want to go back to the the need of the safety of the child getting onto the school bus. It appears that the school bus used to stop on Troy Road. On Troy Road, is that true or not? No. Can you just go to the microphone? Because we need to get this on the record. Can your name and address, please? Uh, Elaine Barashiano, 12 Troy Road. Uh, I live next door to the Canizos. They live on Griffith Drive on the corner. So, okay, I'm, I'm going to talk back 37 years ago or 35 years ago when I would take my children to school. I'd have to walk them out, and I, they couldn't walk by themselves. I'd have to walk with them to, uh, to the corner of Griffith Drive and wait for the school bus. Um, in inclement weather and icy conditions, it was very easy for the cars to slide. And I'm thinking, you know, if we're walking on the grass, I mean, a curb is a little bit of, 
of, of a buffer, not much, but at least it might help. Um, the cars could just slide into people. And, and you ask, like, who walks on this road? There are people walking with lunch bags, and they come from Algonquin Parkway, where there's um, a factories and there's the health club and I, other, other buildings, I'm not sure. But there are people that work there. So whether they have to come up Troy Road and walk around to get the bus, rather than going out to Route 10 because we know there's no sidewalks there. I don't know, but there are people that walk on Troy Road. Um, and this little guy over here, he's going to start school in September. Now, if I, I doubt, I mean, I can't say for sure what Bee Meadow is going to do, but I, I know when the children who live across from Griffith, right across from Griffith uh, Avenue, they... Um, the bus would turn Griffith and go on to Troy Hills, and they would pick up those children right in front of their house because that's where they lived. Uh, but I don't see that happening. At least I don't think it will because the bus would have to go down to Algonquin, turn around, and then go um, to B Meadow, wherever it's going to go, right? So, uh, you know, then um, this, this little boy is going to have to go walk down Troy Hills Road to the corner of Griffith Drive, if that's the case with the school bus. So What's it's the, not only it, for it, our, our the, protection, uh, there's people what, what that do the, walk uh, that sidewalk. All right, so what kind of an easement that we have? The 15, would you take 15, 15 I guess feet? That, uh, I guess Mr. Barashiano had a 10-foot easement. That 10 was, foot? Uh, but I'm not sure what other properties are, are going to require. But we did take easements for each one of the four property lines. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You've got to look at it. All right. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of a temporary fix. I'm thinking of a macadam path. Okay. You have a layout of a macadam path for, for, the, for the moment as a temporary Ron, fix. Ron, you know we could do two for, could do that. for something temporary. We could discuss it with um, transportation in the school. The superintendent well. serves yeah. serves on our school and park traffic safety advisory committee. While we're looking at this, we could speak to them about where the actual bus stop is, and maybe we can ask them to accommodate a special stop, especially because of the the age of that little guy and walking on the side of the street. I, I mean, my daughter's twelve. I wouldn't want her to walk on that. Yeah. So, you know what? I, also, I'll reach out to Mike Wasco and transportation, and so he's going to start this coming September. Yes. And it'll be busing to B Meadow. And the bus stop is on the corner of Griffin and Troy Road. Well, that's what I think it may be. I can't say for sure. I've not been in the system, but they're going to be going to the meeting, uh, the school meeting, I think he said in July. If, so. if you want to contact me, I'd be happy to uh, discuss it further with you and talk to Mr. Wasco and talk to the Transportation Department about what we could do, at least in an interim, like Ron, Ron said, just to do something temporarily to make it better for the little guy and any other children that are there also because school safety and the, the children walking to school or walking to a bus stop is, is our biggest concern and, and we've done things all over town to make things better and um, I, I would like to get on that right away with you talking to the school. Okay. Um, I'll, let this, I'll let this young man speak if I just may say something else. Being Lucy's neighbor, when I take my grandchildren who are two and three years old and I want to take them for a walk down Griffith because I can't walk on Troy, Troy Road. Um, you know, it's been known that it's a, it's a very, could be a, become a very touchy subject when you walk through somebody's driveway. So um, to avoid any future, like, disgruntled uh, neighbor saying, you know, I want to remain good neighbors, I don't want to have to bring my company into their property. You know, I walk on, I try to walk on, up on, the, on Troy Road which I very easily could go through their driveway, but I can't take my company uh, all way, always through maybe, somebody maybe else's a, uh, property. We, we, let, let's, Jerry, give us a recommendation on a temporary path or something that can go across these homes. I can, I can look into that also. All right, would be, yeah. but can we like a lay down on Macadam, uh, a six-footer, uh, what, to four homes? I think there's only four, four homes on that, pro on the, along that street, right? I mean, I'll look from, into that. From, from Lucy's house, Lucy's on the okay. corner, we're number 12, they're number 14. Then you have the gas uh, allotment that we, part of our property, the gas company. And then you have that nice house with the pond. I, what number is that? I don't know. Is 
Let, let's, let's see if we can get you a report on what we can do temporarily. And then regarding the reconstruct, uh, as you heard, the engineering department will try and move forward with a spec on that. And uh, again, we'll take it into serious consideration with the, with the 2018 budget. Uh, you, you're not hearing guarantees on the record. You're hearing serious consideration for it if we can fit it in. But that's going to be predicated upon the, uh, the cost as well and, and how much money we appropriate to roads that year. So we'll take a look at both. Okay? But Jerry, you're going to get somebody out there on this on temporary path. And uh, Ace, you're going to talk to uh, Mike Wasser. Yes, I am. All right. And we'll see what we do with the school bus. We'll try and get your problem straightened out. Okay? And we're going to get the gas company over there. Thank you. And Everton's got a problem. I expect our phone to ring. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, I'm sorry. No, no, it's no problem. I'm just uh, adding on to that. Uh, Daniel Lennox, uh, 14 Troy Road. Uh, I think this gentleman, uh, you know, offered to help me. I appreciate it because, uh, you know, my main concern is my son starting kindergarten. Um, they At the school, they couldn't give me a definitive answer because I wanted to know if they would pick him up from the home. She didn't believe so, but she was going to find out, and we should know soon enough in July. But when I heard that, if you look at the road, it's a big concern because um, you have B Metal Parkway there sidewalks uh, Troy Hills Road right there you got sidewalks Griffin you have sidewalks even on the other side going towards Algonquin you have a sidewalk but from here uh, around the bend um, right where that house is with the pond there's absolutely nothing and uh, my son goes to gymnastics over there right on the um, and I've walked and dropped him off and um, I don't want to do that again because mm -hmm. it is tight there's nowhere to walk it is a big safety concern I mountain bike. Um, I did it this morning all the way to Ridgedale Ave. Um, as soon as you go past Algonquin, starts right again, sidewalks, all the way to the end. Um, before that, I mean, you want to get off that road as fast as possible because there are cars flying there in rush hour in the morning. There are cars flying through there in rush hour at nighttime. And believe me, there's n hardly any room. A car will come to a stop. But what if they don't see you? What if they're on their phone? What if they're doing something, eating, so forth? I believe it is a safety issue. Again, you know, we're all adults here, but my main concern is him. So I just wanted to say my piece. Yeah. Well, well understood. Well understood. We'll be out. We'll take a look. We'll come up again. We'll try and see what can be done with a, what I'll call a temporary fix to make it safe. Uh, that's the primary condition right now, making it safe. And uh, then again, in the longer term, we'll re we'll re evaluate the, uh, the total reconstruct there. So we'll keep you posted. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to be heard at this time? Hey, Jim. Hi, Jim Neidhart, 3414 uh, Appleton Way, Whippany. Um, over the last year or so, I've heard a lot of talk about the connectivity plan, the old Patriots Path being extended uh, throughout the town. Sounds like a great idea. I have to admit, up until about two months ago, I was never on Patriots Path or any of this uh, talk about uh, path without no, maybe it was but I didn't know it <laughs> um, but I, I did buy a bicycle about two months ago and I decided to traverse the uh, did the you properties. do it did yeah. you go toward uh, the mall which way did you go well I went uh, all the way in, into the Bayer property oh yeah okay I was uh, a little disappointed to see it just kind of ends there in the Bayer property once you make the turn by the quick check into the Bayer property yeah. it just kind of stops yeah. And I, I went a little further just to see where it goes, and there doesn't look like there's any opportunity for it to go any place the way it's currently set up. But I went the other way, and I was quite pleasantly surprised to see that I could pretty much bike all the way to the Morristown sewer plant on yeah. Hanover Avenue. Yeah. Which I Actually, was, you can get out to Freeland Heights and Arboretum, but yeah. Yeah, you, you have to go down <laughs> over, you know. <laughs> It's very it's a, talk it's about a, dangerous roads. You don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you take your life in your hands. It's a it's a pretty path though over the stream in the back well, there. It's like, a pretty path for certain portions of it. Yeah. But once you get past the nice rental uh, properties there on Cedar Knolls Road, you go past that. They did a nice job when they put that in of making a nice, I guess, eight foot wide blacktop path. But as soon as you get to the end of that, the path that I guess at one time was very clear has over the years become more and more encroached upon by natural uh, 
fallings. And mm -hmm. people do every once in a while walk through there or bicycle through there, or walk dogs. So there is a path. Yeah. But what used to be perhaps a six or an eight foot path has narrowed down on the ground to, in some places, about a foot or a foot and a half. Is this Central Park area? This and it pretty much go goes like that Please. all the way from there, all the way to, I don't know if you know where carp carpet, etc. is? Yeah. Behind the Walmart? Yeah. There's, yep. uh, there's yep. warehouses back there. One of them is being cleaned up, uh, an old warehouse by railroad tracks. Crossings. So we, we're doing a mapping. Yeah. Okay. Right. And there's also a walking bridge. Yes. You know where the walking yes. bridge yes. is? Yes. yes. So there's that warehouse complex just before the walking bridge. So almost till you get to that warehousing by the walking bridge, all the way back to where the high-priced rentals are on Cedar Knolls, is, is a path that people would go, you know, to continue on. But what I'm saying is, because it hasn't been maintained, there's lots of debris on the ground so that the path where you can walk is about, now about a foot to a foot and a half in some areas. And at this time it's of the year, like the, yep. the some depressions in there by the river too. Yes, yeah, and, right. and the, the, the growth of the bushes at this time of the year, I, I know no, nobody does a cutting until around the end of June, yep. it doesn't make any sense. But when you're riding a bicycle there, trying to stay on this one foot area, you're getting hit in the face by, yep. it's, it's almost to the point of being unnavigable. And my question was, does the township by way of the DPW ever go through and do a, a sweep? Because a cleanup. A cleanup uh, or that, just, that, just that's cutting. A, that's a very good question regarding uh, what was Patriot's Path. And at some time ago, we had signed a contract with uh, the county and we had given up some rights to them in order for them to maintain the, uh, the, the, uh, the path itself. I don't know, we'd have, to, we'd have to blow the dust off of that, number one. Now we finished phase one, but we didn't do any cutbacks yeah, we, in there. We need, we need to go back and contact Morris County Parks because they're the ones who are responsible for maintaining that stretch, yeah. but and that's what we'll do. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was navigable two months ago at the beginning of the, yeah. the growing season. Yeah, but now I can but, imagine. But now you've yeah. got, you got branches coming, to, you know, where you're trying to watch the ground stay on the path on the ground. Yeah. And in some places, it, it goes up and down. And, it, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's dangerous, but it, it is to a point where it's a little dangerous or you have to go so slow that it's, it doesn't provide the enjoyment that it's intended well, yeah, to do. Well, yeah, you're paying less attention to the... To, uh, enjoying it more to uh, trying to stay on the road. Safe, safe. Uh, we'll get a hold of Morris County Parks Commission and uh, make a phone call out to them yep. and see if they can get somebody over there to take a look at it and go through it. I just wanted to bring it up because I figured it wasn't on anybody's yeah. radar. I, w I will mention, it, I mean, it's a beautiful concept, but I was surprised. I went out there on some of the nicest days, 70 degrees, you know, nice weather. I, I went from one end to the other. I didn't pass a single person. I recommend everybody drive over to Woodmont, use his parking lot, park your car there, take your bike off the car, and then pick it up from yeah. there. Because that's a, the, the, that portion that he did along the river Very nice. from Cedar Knolls Road in. Very nice. For fabulous. That's the, uh, I only wish that everything could look like that, yeah. you know. And then we pick it up from there. It goes along the river and up. Uh, but we'll get a hold of Morris County Parks Commission and see okay. if we can get it cleaned up a little bit. My next question was going to be, Phase two. Where are we looking well, at just, that? Just to tie we, want to get, we want to get this done. Well, just to tie into phase one, there's still a couple uh, aspects of phase one that still need to be completed. One is the uh, there's paint that goes down along the path, and also a, a two-way cycle track that crosses over Cedar Knolls Road, that air, the bridge over 287. So the that needs to be cleaned, by the way. There's yes, lots so, of debris on that bridge. So um, that paint, uh, the installation of the paint, is scheduled to occur next week. So you'll see that, and then as a follow-up then, there's some additional signage that, for the path, some trailheads, um, some wayfinding signs so you know where you are on the path. That is probably maybe two or three weeks away. So you'll see phase one completed um, you know, probably by you know, mid-July, something like that. Okay. Um, phase two would, is, is, is planned to be from Central Park to the Bayer um, facility in front of MetLife where they installed the eight-foot path. Uh, that was not budgeted for this year, but I think the town c 
committee. We want to gauge how much interest and activity. You're going to go in the street at that we, point. Are you in the street at that point? At that point, the bicyclists are going to be along Eden Lane in the in the shoulder. We better take, because start to nice look at wide shoulder there. Start to look at no parking signs on that side because we have yeah. people now. Will that be parking. painted? Yeah. Will that be um, called at minimum, out in at minimum, any way? Well, we're looking at different options. <clears throat> you know, uh, the most economical would just be to put chevrons in the road, <clears throat> right. just to, in the shoulder, not the road, in the shoulder to identify that, you know, that is the bicycle lane. Okay. Um, and the pedestrians will utilize the sidewalks on the lane. Okay. How far does the township go <coughs> along the path? Like, where does the township property end and become Morristown or whatever? Does it, do we, do we have responsibility all the way to the Hanover sewerage place or does the Hanover land on that end? stop sooner Behind the prior Walmart. to that? Yeah, that's all us. Behind the Walmart's all us? Well, the, the because well, you got the county, uh, the county garden. Is that on our property? The county garden? No, that that is all. Ca side. That's county, that's county property. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we do have the Patriots Path runs along that alignment. Okay. And that's where we will co-locate the the this connectivity path on that on that okay. path also. So we'll have signage to identify. Okay. And sure. it, it is it is very confusing when you get to Hanover Avenue. Uh, it's not apparent that you have to go left to go down to the Arboretum because I went right down to the correctional facility and all of a sudden I'm seeing all kinds of get out of here signs. So it's not very apparent. It seems like the path goes straight. There's so no the signage, the signage component. What's, what, yeah. sign, what signage? There'll be well, there's a sign there. There'll be new signs. There'll be new signs, yeah, be new signs. Be new signs and installed by mid, mid okay. July. Thank Jim, you. real quick, thank you very much for sharing this because that overgrowth is where all our ticks are. And even I, with the, I actually woke up the next morning with a on my life. Here's what we do with the schools. When they went school, we had the same issue in our pads. We cut them back about four to six feet, and we, we put uh, wood chips and made it so that can't happen. And especially this year, because of the rain, we're having a real tick issue, and the schools are going to be spraying again. Real tickish? <laughs> real, yeah, real serious. But uh, you know what? I appreciate that because, you know what? We want to work, encourage our kids to use these pads, but we also don't want our kids to get sick. And that's exactly where all the ticks are, right in that growth. Thank you, Jim. Floor so remains open. Health issue. Anyone else like to be heard at this time? Quick uh, question on that easement on Short Road where the, the gas uh, lines are. They used to cut that twice a year. No one cuts it anymore. Who was responsible for that? What, the gas the line end? easement uh, that goes past, uh, that goes behind the homes there. That's right. Who's, uh, who's responsible for getting uh, on that property? They those, are. Yeah, those are those are uh, high pressure main easements. Yeah. So that Columbia Gas and uh, there's another operator, Algonquin Gas, also operates a couple of those easements. Uh, they do the cutting on them. They maintain their easements. It hasn't been there a couple of years. Now that you mentioned ticks, yeah. uh, yeah. curious if maybe a. Is it getting? Is it is it, is it is it over? Is it overgrown? Is it getting over? It's overgrown. Yeah. Maybe we want to put a little well, letter into them. I know yes, we're coming out of there. I don't know what they are, but right there. <laughs> Given what we know, it was by the been buried there. Who knows what they are, right? All right. Uh, okay. At this time, if no one else would like to be heard, motion to close. So moved. Okay. And second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. At this point, uh, for the township committee, Committee Gallagher. Thanks, Ron. Just sure. a couple quick ones tonight. We're just about to announce our dates for. The summer team pool nights. We're going to have two in Hanover Township, two in Florham Park, and two in East Hanover. We're going to keep our kids busy with good, healthy activity and interacting with positive role models. Another thing that we're going to do in Hanover Township, a pilot program with Hanover Township PD and East Hanover PD and Retro Fitness is training with the police. At the Eric Legrand seminar with Steve Weatherford, some of our Hanover Township kids were very impressed with the size of the biceps on some of our police officers. <laughs> and I said to Chief Roddy, whatever it takes to get these kids into the gym on a Friday night, other than hiding behind one of our schools. So we have a meeting next week, and we're going to have training with the police. I thought going to have a hunk contest. Huh? No, I thought you were going to have a hunk contest or something. Well, they're going to, they're going to be wait, busy. Where are you going there? And you know what? Once again, Retro Fitness Hanover Township's own is reaching out and saying, we'd love to have you on a Friday or Saturday night with some of the law enforcement guys. So that's a beautiful thing, and it's starting right here in Hanover Township with our brothers across the Whippany River in East Hanover. Uh, the D DPW has been busy. I always say on Facebook, they're like HDPD, where they're 24-7. Our roads look great, our grass looks great, the bushes look great, the signage is good. They're just fantastic. I appreciate everything they do. 
And to segue into what um, Bob is going to talk about shortly is we will be having our fireworks out here this year. DPW will be working hand in hand with the rec, the police department, and uh, they will be setting up, they will be taken down, and they will be monitoring everything all night long along with those other agencies. So that's it, Ron. And to conclude, I would just say the weather is going to get nice this weekend, <laughs> and please be careful. Hopefully the kids will be on their bikes, they'll be walking, people my age will be attempting to start jogging once again. <laughs> so there will be people in the streets, just please be careful, allow yourself a couple extra minutes because hopefully this weekend the, water, the weather gets nice. That's it, Ron. Very good, thank you. Very good, John. Yes, um, great things happen in Hanover, that's the theme. And this, this month, this is New Jersey Municipalities Magazine that I'm holding up. In this magazine is a featured article about Hanover Township, and it's talking about Hanover Township's economic renaissance. Um, and the article features the work, combined work of the planning board and economic development in reinventing Hanover Avenue. Twenty years ago, Hanover Avenue was nothing more than blight, industrial decay, and significant environmental cleanup. Um, that's been replaced by major development. We're very pleased about that. That corridor will soon support over 350 jobs, 350,000 square foot of major retail space and environmentally a cleanup in the tens of millions of dollars. Um, so that's, that's good news for Hanover Township. Another good news for Hanover Township is Hanover Township is now welcoming the addition of Barclays Bank, which is a major financial institution which has bought the South Jefferson Road campus called Crossings. So we welcome them. It'll be a great addition to our community. And lastly, under the theme of great things happen in Hanover, there is a special accomplishment, not of this township, but of the Boy Scouts, the Patriots Path Council within our township. And what's so special about this is that the Patriots Path Council welcome not one, not two, not three, but four Eagle Scouts this, this June. Uh, Kang Lu, Will Wayne Scott, Tommy McBride, and Joey Mahalko with the four new Eagle Scouts. Congratulations goes out to all of these Eagles, as well as the Scout leaders who, who donate the time and make the effort to train and develop them so that they can achieve these special accomplishments. Mayor, that concludes my Thank report. Thank you, John. Very, very impressive as well. Very good. George. Yes. Uh, first of all, our new police officers are becoming well-trained. Uh, I think within another week or two, I would presume they'll be on, that correct, they'll be on their own. Um, so hopefully that's going to be uh, a plus for the department. Uh, Landmark Commission uh, is also working on a, their historic preservation plan, working with the planning board, which becomes rather significant when you also look at the great job they did tonight on the EDAC. I would also like to read into record a letter that I sent to the regional news, the daily records, and the two new um, elected candidates uh, for Hanover Township. Sent this to Jim Lent. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Brian Cahill and Mike Mahalko for their successful election in the primary to represent Hanover Township in the November general election. I believe that all the candidates running this year did a good job of bringing the issue to the voters. I would especially like to thank the residents of Hanover Township for giving me the opportunity to have served them for the past eight and a half years. It has truly been a rewarding experience. We have a great town with great services, which I'm sure our newly elected committee members know and will continue to support. Lastly, in the future, I will continue to work for the betterment of all the residents of Hanover Township, respectfully submitted and bless you all, George Capone. Uh, one thing for sure, I've been involved for many years, uh, although not successful for the primary, I have no intentions of hiding myself under the counter or burying myself anywhere. I will continue to be as active as I have for the past 30, 30 plus years since moving into Hanover Township. Thank you. Thank you, George. Don't worry, George, you're not going nowhere. Robert. 
Yeah, I just want to once again thank the uh, members of the Economic Development Advisory Committee under the uh, liaisonship of uh, Deputy Mayor John Faramaska for that tremendous presentation this evening. I thought it was you know, very well done and uh, really brought to the front a lot of the good things that are happening here in town and then plans you know, moving ahead over the next 10 years. So it shows that our, you know, our volunteers are, are genuinely concerned about the long-term long good of the town and the residents. Um, in terms of recreation, the fireworks are Thursday, June 29th. I may have said Wednesday, June 29th at our last meeting, so they are in fact Thursday, Jim, just to uh, yes. make sure you're there the right evening. Sorry about that if it was incorrect. Uh, but the right here on the township campus should be a great event. Um, food trucks, all kinds of activities, DJ, of course, culminated by the fireworks. And then the uh, four summer concerts, once again, are going to be at Malapartis this year, um, as opposed to the Brickyard, our normal venue. Um, July 10th, 17th, 24th, and 31st. Four great concerts, of course, free of charge. So um, nothing, uh, nothing actually is free, but they're all made possible by donations from our corporate neighbors. So please mark your calendar for four great concerts in the park. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very nice. Excellent. A lot of things going on. Um, the uh, Stony Brook Community Farm is uh, still under construction, uh, but moving along, in spite of the weather, uh, it's moving along quite, quite well. We're there daily watching. We're hoping to salvage the growing season. Uh, we know we lost some time here. It was a difficult issue uh, with the contractors. But I think uh, once we have a grand opening, which will be hopefully the uh, middle of June, we're about a week or so away from announcing anything on that, uh, the committee for the farm is going to be meeting uh, next week, discuss plans there. But I think when we do have a grand opening uh, and the community comes out and sees uh, what uh, was involved here and what was invested here, I think you're going to be very, very impressed. Uh, there'll be 144 gardens involved. We had uh, right off the bat, before we even announced, we had over 20 uh, people that wanted to uh, take gardens and uh, apologize because uh, they were hoping to get into the ground uh, early part of May. Uh, but uh, as I said, we look like uh, we'll be ready to go uh, toward the middle of June and uh, hopefully salvage the planting season. I think tomatoes and peppers still like cold weather. So uh, we'll hopefully get there. Uh, one final comment. Uh, and uh, we had a very disturbing uh, matter here in our Hanover Township this week uh, with a robbery at the Chase Bank on Route 10, as you know. Our police department is fully involved, along with the county, in investigating the matter. Uh, and um, uh, I just, uh, I know people were very anxious, uh, aren't we all? Uh, we don't like to hear that that's happening. Um, it's an unfortunate product of the fact that we have state highways and easy access to them. Uh, but I want to assure the community that during that period of time, uh, the, uh, the threat involved in, in this thing uh, was, uh, was under control. And I, I say that with some degree of confidence, having met with the chief, having met with other officers, as did George today. Yes, I, think I met did with too. the chief Friday. And Friday. we got a full briefing on uh, the matter. Uh, the assailant, the, the uh, robber, um, uh, made his way back to the highways, did not get into residential neighborhoods. Uh, we know that. We had uh, uh, scent sniffing dogs, etc., cetera, and uh, that was the matter there. Uh, but this is what I want to say to our community, that in the event of, uh, of imminent danger or emergencies, we have many ways of trying to reach out to you, not the least of which is a reverse 911 system. Your phone will ring. Uh, those of you who have signed up for Everbridge, and I hope you all did, uh, will get not only text messages on your cell phones, your phones will ring at home as well, and that will happen. If there is an immediate emergency in a neighborhood, uh, we aren't going to wait. Doorbells will be rung. Police officers will be out in the field. Uh, our safety of our children in, in, in that area, in that zone, uh, was a first priority. Uh, thankfully, uh, schools were closed uh, or had finished up for that particular day. Uh, the uh, chief assures me that uh, the amount of officers that had responded from all the surrounding communities in that area had Hanover well under control, well protected, and he was prepared for any eventuality. So 
uh, that uh, may not be the finest assurance for you uh, at home with uh, families and uh, children, uh, but I just want to tell you uh, that we have one of the finest departments and the methodologies that they have are the finest out there and uh, your, your safety is our first concern. So, yeah, uh, that call came in around 335. <clears throat> There's a 911 call that came in around 335 in the afternoon. There was approximately 50 officers from, from local <clears throat> areas, surrounding communities, uh, along with the uh, county, county sheriff, the uh, dog sniffing group, uh, FBI. Uh, they did patrol the schools. That was the, one of the things that the chief informed me this afternoon. There will be another briefing tomorrow, which I will attend with the mayor. Um, but the chief assured me there was no imminent danger. Um, they definitely had enough patrolmen that were making sure that everything was okay. Um, unfortunately, the individual was not apprehended, but you know that's something else that uh, I don't have all the information on what, what, uh, how much money was taken or anything like that. But for now, as the mayor said, we just want to assure the residents that uh, I know there was concern. To use reverse 911, the problem is is that the um, the desk becomes very busy with phone calls. So the dispatcher is really busy directing law enforcement throughout the different areas. So that in itself becomes a major issue. So if there was any kind of real situation, everyone definitely would uh, be, be notified if it was involved in your particular area. So please feel assured that the police department is doing their job and they're doing it very well. Chief Roddy and his department work very well with the rest of the, the, the departments involved. So if there's any concerns, please just let us know. All right. Thank you, George. <clears throat> if there's anything else from the Township Committee, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved move and seconded. All in Aye. favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourn. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Very good. Uh, gentlemen, we have a conference session. Yeah. Okay. session, here we go. Jinxed us. Sometimes we get faster.